Washington. It's the Jackson Day dinner, what our American correspondent calls a New Deal love feast at $100 a plate. All the Democrats got together, and the President and the Vice President came over all boyish. <laughs> Southampton. The Coronation Scott is going to America. The cracked, streamlined engine of the LMS taking a trip across the Atlantic for exhibition at the World Fair. Eight coaches are going with it. This engine weighs a hundred tons. Imagine the power of the crane that lifts it. London. Oxford and Cambridge held an indoor skiing competition and the light blues won the slalom. But the jumping was more exciting for the lay spectator, so here it is. Drills and spills. America had the same idea, but came down harder. The ground was packed with 60,000 spectators for the match between England and Wales, and they included plenty of Welshmen with encouraging signs. The game, though exciting, was scrappy. The muddy condition of the ground made open work very difficult. The majority of thrills came from brilliant, determined tackling. England, as usual, were playing in white, but after romping for ten minutes, they weren't fit to be seen. There was only one movement that really brought results. In the second half, Teden ran through to score a try for England. It was unconverted, but England won by three points to nil. Now for a nice cake of soap. Quite a lot of sailors in the big crowd at Fratton Park to watch the cup tie between Pompey and West Bromwich Albion. Albion are the team in stripes. This match put them out of the cup. Portsmouth were the winners by two goals to nil. Here comes the first goal. So that put them well on the way in the race for Wembley. Now they're coming up the straight. And here comes the second goal for Portsmouth. Somebody at the back of the crowd in West Ham didn't know his own strength and the fellas in front had to suffer for it. It's not surprising there were a few casualties. The ambulance men were kept busy. Here comes the chloroform. Spurs came out first in their white shirts. The spectators were much more dressy. And here comes West Ham. West Ham won the toss. And Spurs kicked off to a game that was full of fun as well as football. It was what you might call a rousing game and it certainly roused the spectators. Spurs were the first to score through Morris. Soon afterwards, Spurs got a second through Sargent. Just before half-time, Spurs were guilty of an infringement and West Ham scored a penalty goal through McCauley. Even the interval kept the excitement going. Unemployed demonstrators ran onto the ground and then there was a bit of tackling by the police. In the second half, Spurs netted the ball a third time, and then the Hammers got really busy. Foxhall put the ball in to make it 3-2, and a spectator put the ball out again, but it was still 3-2. Then the equaliser, Foxhall again. 3-3. Shoot! Nice going. Before the finish, Spurs put the ball in a game with a header, but it was offside and a draw. Three all. Something like 5,000 birds were on exhibition at the Horticultural Hall National Show of Cage Birds. All kinds of birds, from budgerigars to parrots, requiring an assortment of food from worm's egg to dried flies. Fancy having to sing after eating dried flies. This means war. Farman, save my child. ARP.
This is the Gaumont British News, presenting the world to the world. End of a heat wave. In the district round Melbourne and Victoria, a bushfire of terrifying proportions swept the land. Over 60 lives were lost. The damage valued in terms of money is almost incalculable. Timber camps, townships, sawmills, hydroelectric stations, all wiped out. Volunteers waged a losing battle against the dread onrush of an army of flame. Abandoned cars tell a story of disaster. Death overtook their occupants as they raced from its outstretched burning arms. Night brought no respite. Torches of scrubland lit up the broad heavens as the inferno spread before the wind. Hundreds of families took shelter in dugouts in the earth, like the benighted peoples of a primitive age. Man's puny efforts were powerless against the ravaging might of this overwhelming fury. But man with the will to live fought on, even when all was lost. Day by day, the march of Franco's army brought conquest nearer to the government stronghold of Barcelona. A city besieged, beset by shellfire, and bombarded continuously from the sky. Only the great spirit of the defenders has kept the enemy at bay so long. Accompanied by the roar of ceaseless gunfire, the insurgents marched on to the government headquarters in the south of Spain. For many, many months, its people have been accustomed to the roar of air raid 